Hey guys, Kyle here from Manic Tackle Project, uh, standing on the banks of the Tungariro River, as you can see in the background there. I well, thought we'd take the opportunity, since we're in the, the right in the heart of winter fishing, uh, is just to give you a bit of an update on the Tungariro roll cast and the gear associated with the cast. And uh, we'll step through the leader setup, um, highlight the new fly line that we're using, and um, talk on rods as well and touch on that. So uh, let's, let's get into it. Right, firstly with the rod, uh, in my hand here you might be able to recognise is the Scott Radian 9 foot 6 6 weight, which has been my go-to rod for many years now, and I just love the thing. Um, some people ask, you know, why a 9 foot 6 6 weight? Well, simply, it's a little longer than a 9 footer. Uh, the tip behaves a little differently, it's a little more rigid, and this m makes the uh, manipulating and setting up of the line very easy and, and direct. And then it flexes right and nice and deep, and there's plenty of power down the bottom here. I always like the fighting butt as well. That comes in handy for fighting fish. You can pop it into the chest and leave the fish uh, as you need. Really, really good rod. We're super pumped at Manic. We've got a couple of new rods in the horizon that are going to fit this bill. So the same dimensions, nine foot six, six weight with the fighting butt, of course. The high end from Scott, it is the Centrix. It's got utilizing the latest technologies and graphite layout. It's a weave and it's tough. And we've got one from Primal and that's going to be a honey as well, look out. In the past with the Tungarero roll cast we've utilised lines, sort of a couple of line weights over the rod just to get the mass uh, from the line in order to get a really deep purchase on the rod and really propel and throw that line, pull the bomb out of the water. So that was, that was then but now we're in a new era. Last year we launched the new Tungarito roll cast fly line, specific fly line for the job. It really is a, a beauty to cast and a real joy to fish with. I'm just going to run through the features of the fly line uh, and just you know, point out why it is so good. We've got a light tip and that's quite long too so that lifts off the water easily and also it works to soften the, uh, the turnover of the fly line and so you don't get that big heavy kick and the flies fall to the bottom. It tend to carry and turn over and just a better loop shape. Secondly, we're back into the head, but this is the big loading part of the line. A lot of mass there, you need mass to move mass. And uh, this is the optimal length, meaning that when you're setting up the cast, slipping the line, putting up and forming the D-loop, you're not running out of this heavy stuff. You don't want to be on the thin stuff because you just can't load the rod and it's funny in the hand. So this is the optimal length, 46 feet. Behind that we have tapering off to a very thin running line. Now this has little resistance through the guides and just travels really really well and uh, once that cast is up into flight pulls out of the water and just goes really hums um, and the Superflow technology is an improved coating and basically it's super slick uh, but yet very supple but true to nature of airflow has a nice hard outer coating which is very slick in the guides. So this is a great, great tool. It's been super popular over the last 12 months. I certainly love casting it. It's a great line. All right, we'll tick off the leader. So in total length, I wouldn't recommend any more than about 14 feet, including your tapered leader and your tippet. Let's look at the breakdown of it. To start with, we have a airflow tactical leader, which is a copolymer. It's a 9 footer and it's 1x meaning 12.8 pound. I've cut that in half and then I've attached a tippet ring to the end. And then from there I have attached my 8 pound G3 fluorocarbon and made it out to 14 feet. The indicator has simply been attached by a half hitch and cut back. Down the way on the point is a jig bomb so effectively the bead sits down and causes the hook to ride point up. So less likely to foul on the bottom. Above that I have the ability to position the dropper fly where I wish and in the winter I like to have it pretty close down and that's performed done just by a simple surgeon's knot. Just a little, like to point out with um, you know having a go at it yourself is that um, just initially it's probably best that you stick to uh, a natural fly 
a natural nymph rather than a glow bug. It's um, can be deceiving. A, a glow bug, even of a small size of a 14 or a 16, can create quite a lot of drag in the water and sometimes it's just hard to pop the cast out of the water. So yeah, that's a little tip. Just stick to naturals and maximum leader length of 14 feet. You can come inside of that, you know, 13, 12 foot if it's easier and, uh, and just persevere with that. Keeping on top of your indicator size, uh, looking after it, making sure it's well treated is a really important part of roll casting because you're not airing the, the indicator out back and forwards like, a, um, like an overhead cast does and as a result the indicators can become a bit sodden. So the trick is to use a much smaller indicator, dense, plenty of uh, poly yarn or yarn that you're using there and well treated. And uh, just today, and you know, this is often my go-to rig, uh, I've just half hitched on the amount of uh, yarn I require for the weight of the fly. If you're using a very heavy fly, then just make more yarn for your indicator, put more yarn in, uh, and don't handicap yourself. If you've got a light fly and your indicator's really big, reduce the indicator size if your fly is lighter, and uh, that way you get uh, good results. So this material here is uh, Loon Strikeout uh, yarn, this is basically a pre-treated yarn uh, and all I've done is basically made it to size uh, and then additionally treated it with a quell and uh, all I do is just put a little bit on the on a fine tooth comb brush and just brush that in and that just distributes that that a quell well and just it improves the water shedding uh, part of the equation so yeah that's my go-to. Mm -hmm.